Okay, we're here, it's live, day two, Oracle Open World. Moscone is draped in red, that means the cube. And this is the backup and recovery spotlight, focus on data protection as a service. It's a theme, John, that you and I have talked about since the really, we started this back at VMworld in, in 2010, this notion that backup has to transform, and has to change. Daryl Smith is here, he's the chief database architect within EMC IT. We love to talk to the practitioners within uh, EMC's IT division, very leading edge uh, set of folks. Daryl, welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you again. Thank you very much, appreciate it. So this is kind of your world here, Oracle Open World, all the, all the DBAs hanging out, the whole, whole 60,000 DBAs, I guess. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe tens of thousands of DBAs. So, <laughs> so how's the show going for you? This is great, I'm really in my element. Yeah. This is the place I want to be. Yeah, so, uh, so what have you been doing since you've been here? Just uh, kicking the tires? You've been, you, do they have, you, uh, they have you working, meeting with customers? Or are you able to, to check out you know, with, with some, what some of your peers are doing? Well, it's been great. I have met with several customers. Um, obviously, I've been out here in the exhibit hall floor. There's a lot of great technologies here. Um, but primarily, I'm here to get to learn. I'm going to sessions, finding about you know, where the trends are, what's going on with 12C. A lot of great stuff. So what do you make of 12C? It's interesting. There's uh, some really nice features in there, um, some features I have yet to hear about. And then there's other features that don't really uh, make a whole lot of sense, I think, in some cases. Yeah, like what? I mean, what, what? You're going to nail me, aren't you? No, no, what makes <laughs> sense? What's, uh, what, what's confusing to you? I mean, tell Oracle, you know, maybe try to fix it. But no, so yeah. what, let's start with what do you like? I mean, what are the, from a practitioner's perspective, what about 12C makes you say, oh wow, I really want that, you know, thank you Oracle for doing that. Right, so there's a lot of features uh, uh, that really help with the storage. Um, they've made some great improvements in the prefetch, table prefetches and things like that. Very good, there's a lot more integration between the different product sets that they've got. Uh, some of the uh, Active Data Guard improvements are really phenomenal. Uh, some of the Golden Gate improvements have been really phenomenal. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of great technologies they're packing into it. Right, okay, so the big, big part of that too is in memory, right? And you guys have some experience with that. I mean, right. I mean, in memory's been around, you know, th that talk's been around, it was the database has yeah, been well, around. Times 10's been around for quite a while. Yeah, right, so, okay, so that's, a, that's appealing to you. So you see you guys taking advantage of that over time? Is that, is that right, or? Well, uh, you know, it's obviously something we're going to have to look at. Um, there's a lot of uh, in-memory database players now. Um, you know, SAP has HANA. Um, uh, Pivotal has SQL Fire. Uh, we're definitely evaluating those. We're already starting to use some HANA, some, some SQL Fire. So we're going to have to take a look and see how the implementation was done with 12C. And if it fits our workloads, we'll start using it. So talk about um, what gets you excited as, as, a, as a DBA. Um, we always hear about you know, doing more with less. You have to do more with less yeah. a, a, as well. I mean, it's the mantra in IT, but you don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got to do more with less. <laughs> You're probably thinking about, yeah. all right, you want to work, how am I going to add value for the business? How am I going to make right. the line of business more productive? How am I going to drive value, right? So talk about that a little bit in your role as a DBA. Yeah, this is really a very exciting time for me. Um, I've grown up with databases. I've been doing it since uh, Oracle version four. Um, you know, so I've been doing that for a long time, but this next wave of computing is really all about automation. Standardization and automation. So the whole uh, IT as a service mantra um, requires that. I need to be able to automate things so that my my DBAs aren't spending their days adding data files and monitoring backups and checking to make sure that the system is running well. I need to automate all that so we can then focus on really getting to that front office, getting in front of the business and understanding what their true problems are so that we can be much more agile and respond to those. So I don't know if you were able to hear Stephen Manley's little story about uh, he was talking to a, a DBA at one point uh, and, and the DBA kind basically of threw said, us under the bus. Say it again? I, said, I think he kind of threw us under the bus. No, he, he, <laughs> didn't, he didn't really throw the DBA under the bus, he kind of threw the, the, the backup admin under the right, bus. Right, well, I mean, good point. I guess he did, I mean, he's not talking about you, Daryl, I know you a little bit, you're, you're a very respectful guy, you would never throw your, 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 your storage admin under not the bus. Not anyway. But what he said was that the, the DBA was frustrated because 
he or she didn't have any visibility on yeah. how the data was being protected and this, the, the back of them said, trust me, I got you covered. Okay, but I want to know more right. about it. So you have talk to about that, that a little bit. Yeah, so talk about that a little bit. What was, you know, what did you want that you couldn't get and, and then we'll talk about how things have changed. Sure, so DBAs hate black holes um, or black boxes. You know, that's definitely a theme that I heard from that last interview. Uh, we like to know what's going on. We need to be able to get our hands on it and touch it and feel it. And backups are one of those things where you kick off your R-Man backup, maybe it's going to complete, it's running slow, you really don't know why. Um, and then you, know, you go talk to the, the backup admin or you create your ticket, and they're like, everything's fine, don't worry about it, it's covered, but you know, the backup is now taking five hours and six hours, and you, know, you really don't know what's going on, so how can you really trust that it's safe? Nowadays, things are much simpler. Take, for example, enterprise manager, not OEM, but the data domain enterprise manager, I can actually go in and see that the backup is running and it's running at peak. So I can truly estimate when that backup is going to be done. Daryl, Jeremy Burton was up on stage in the keynote after Joe Tucci uh, gave the awesome intro, but he's getting into the weeds and getting into the product details and yeah. he's talking about the DBA and Dave and I were just commenting on the intro about the balance between the DBA and other you know, things like recovery, real critical, uh, managing the data loss side of it. But Jeremy kind of points out that the DBA roles obviously change with automation, changes the game a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not replacing the DBA, all that talk is kind of a little bit, little bit over the top, but in general, the DBA role is becoming much more versatile, much more needed skills in other areas, whether it's you know, more of analyst role, data science, or getting more geeky into the, into the app side. So, so this, you know, I mean, in, you know, in terms of technical, right, you can be more yeah. analyst on data science, or you can go in and go deep in the weeds on technology and get yeah. into the app side, coding. How do you see that, that balance and that transition of the new DBA, the modern DBA, where you know, there's range now of skill sets yep. and functionality that they have to do in their job? Right, so referring back to the keynote, it's both, both disruptive and opportunistic. It's a great opportunity for DBAs to really get themselves out of the weeds. You know, does everybody really want to add data files and go monitor and check to make sure the backup completed and do installs of the same thing day after day? We don't want, really want to do that. We want to really You don't want to do that, John. Yeah, give me a gun, I'll put it in my head right now. <laughs> exactly. you know? Give me the time to get out there and really understand what our customers need so that I can respond to that. And that's going to not only help me grow personally, but also professionally. So what it's a great opportunity. What's some of the vibe out there in the trenches with DB, other DBAs and the peer group out there and the practitioners? I mean, what's the sentiment out there for DBAs? Are they like chomping at the bit to do more things? What are you seeing in terms of just general anecdotal trends that you're seeing? Well, once we get past the, you know, I'm drowning and I, I can't get up uh, <laughs> conversation, because we really don't have the time, because we're so uh, stuck in the weeds dealing with this growing amount of data. You know, we need some help. And so once we get past that conversation, we start talking about how automation and service-oriented architectures can really help get you out of those weeds. It's a very positive conversation. It's liberation, really. I mean, the DBA gets liberated. Hey, oh. thank you for uh, pulling me out from uh, certain Death. Certain, death. <laughs> Certain death of boredom, Yeah, I the think. drowning analogy is a good one. I mean, I think the lifeline of automation, DevOps, we've seen with yeah. you know, agile programming has kind of really hit the mark and made the data, data component as a service very relevant. And I think you know, EMC and, and others are talking about this data fabric as an enabler layer. That's not an admin function. It's really more of a robust business mission critical opportunity. It is, it absolutely is. I want to talk about um, IT transformation, data protection as a service. I, I want to test some things out. So, you know, you, you, you hear the vendor messaging around IT transformation, not just you know EMC, but but you know other other suppliers. When you talk to practitioners, we like to test that. So, so where are you guys in terms of getting to so-called IT as a service? We we've had Sanjay Merchandani before on, on the Cube, and your new CIO, and 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 that was always a, a vision set forth. Um, where are you in that? so-called journey in terms of getting to IT as a service, and, and, uh, and then I want to talk specifically about data protection as a service. Sure, so we've been building IT as a service for a while now. Um, we've built infrastructure as a service, which is interesting. We've built databases as a service, which is interesting. So building all these little components out, you know, they're helpful. Um, but really where we're at now is the full automation. So we're, we want to automate, and we are automating, the entire application stack, right from the load balancer all the way down through the database with built-in data protection, backups, built-in security, um, built-in DevOps model, right, with the SDLC integration. 
we want to go for full automation so that we can really raise all of our common practitioners, our DBAs, our sysadmins, up a level. And what's the goal there, that, that you literally have no human intervention other than swapping out a disk drive when it breaks kind of thing? I mean, <laughs> Well, that, that would be great. I don't think we're going to quite get there. Maybe you know, when we get to the, the age of HAL, right, for those 2010 enthusiasts, <laughs> uh, we might get something like that. But reality is, I don't need to spend a lot of hours deploying applications. I don't need a lot of hours configuring systems. I really should spend my time focusing on how can I make that Oracle database run to perfection? And so take it up from you know, stuck down in the weeds, I don't have time to see what's actually going on, and just bring our whole skill set up a level so that we're focused on the internals versus the infrastructure. Okay, and, and so if what I described is, is Nirvana, and we're probably not going to get there in our, in our lifetime, but, but and how far can you take that automation? You're saying you know, provisioning, you said load balancing, and you're saying tuning still a lot of manual intervention. Uh, tuning obviously. the application is going to require yeah. human intervention. And that's where you today. actually want to spend your time, is right. that right? Okay. Right. Why not be able to provide a better service for the business versus just trying to survive? And now, I want to talk about data protection as a service because, in a way, data protection used to be pretty simple. It's like, it was, okay, one size fits all. Yeah, Here's well, what you was, get. <laughs> databases were like 500 meg back then. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Of course, the, you know, the, the bad thing about that was that you're either spending too much or too little on protecting your, your, your data. So where are you now with regard to being able to say, okay, this application, based on its, its business value, its RPO and its RTO, uh, or whatever business impact analysis you do, should have this level of data protection, and I want to spend this much, versus this app, I want to dial it down or dial it up. Yeah. Can you actually do that today, and how do you do that? You can, I mean, you can literally set service levels for backups, you could set priorities that you know, one more mission critical system gets the backup resources over another, but I like to think about it a little differently. If I can go ahead and I can automate it all, and I've got automated provisioning of my backups, right? it's very easy to do these days with tools like BCO, and because I've got technologies like Data Domain Boost, and Data Domain itself, and RMAN, and the, all these integrations that happen, it's very easy to drop down the DD Boost uh, agent and fully automate that backup. So now that the DBAs have no issues in terms of doing the backups, now throughput has been almost eliminated uh, because I'm now doing my dedupe on the server. Essentially, I've decentralized that function. So now my backup media doesn't have to worry about doing all that work. I can actually treat every database almost identically and not worry about any one of them losing any of their SLA. All right, so let's, let's, let's drill down to that a little bit. So, so our man is obviously, uh, you know, the Oracle's, it's really the only you know, backup methodology. If for, you're going to back up production, Oracle, you really yeah, should right. be using I mean, our man. It really is the only choice. So, yes. okay, so, and that's the prism through which you look as a DBA through your backups. It's, Correct. It's our man. So, you know, everything else is sort of secondary. You want it to integrate with our man. So you know, Data Domain has done that and others have done that as well. And now, talk about, how, where DD Boost uh, fits in all that. How do you leverage DD Boost uh, to, to create a business capability? Right, so to me, DD Boost is really the secret sauce in terms of making this all possible. So DD Boost is integrated with RMAN, so I can use RMAN and just literally straight back up to the, to the data domain appliance, and then I can also have RMAN instruct the data domain appliance to make a copy into a disaster recovery type site. site. okay. Right, which you know, we use for uh, dev refresh, right, from production, um, and also for off-site tapes. Not oh. really tapes. Oh, you use, eight, you use oh, tapes? I'm sorry, <laughs> if I say tapes, I'm supposed to say that other word. Yeah, yeah. Can we say that? Yeah, you can say tape okay, sucks. Okay, tape sucks. <laughs> um, okay, so you use the, the name tapes, because that's the nomenclature, the, that's, you that's know, the I, syntax? I'm old or, school, what can or, I say? Or do you actually use, do you use We are tape, tape free. Um, the EMC uses no tape. We use no tape. Really, not even for deep archive, compliance? Well, wh when you're deduping at, at that kind of a level, all, all I'm tracking are my changes. So the amount of physical storage required to do database backups is very, very small. Add to that the fact that I've got built-in compression. I literally backed up a 12 terabyte database. First time, no dedupe, down to three terabytes just from compression, which is amazing. So now my next day backup, is literally going to compress down to another 100 meg. We can store an awful lot of data on that data domain appliance, and if it starts filling up, we can actually archive it using data domain. And you've archive. got remote sites that you can fail over to in the event of a disaster. And that's Absolutely. Really, that's kind of your approach, as opposed to shipping a bunch of uh, tapes on a truck and driving it to a data center. That's not something that you guys are doing. But, no, tape but, sucks. Okay, but if, if you didn't work for Joe Tucci, would you use tape? 
Uh, not if I not if I can help <laughs> yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, tape should be dead. The technologies are there today. Interesting. Um, okay, good. I, I I didn't realize you guys were 100 percent tape free. I yeah. thought you did like the well, last it, There was a time where you know we would back it up to data domain, and then after a while we would drop it to tape and take it off site. But now that our data centers are 600 miles apart, I can literally back it up to one data domain appliance, have it replicate to another, and that takes care of all of my. Um, regulatory needs in yeah. terms of the offsite storage, and because the dedupes down so small, it doesn't really require me a whole lot of disk space. Because Data Domain has good tape integration for those customers it that does. want to do tape. It as does, you, as you it does. Well know. But, uh, <laughs> but you just hate tape. I did not. <laughs> 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 All right, Daryl, I'll uh, give you the last word here. Um, advice for practitioners trying to get to uh, IT as a service generally, but specifically data protection as a service. What do you, what's your, What's your advice, what are your roadmaps, what's your prescription for success? Well, the, I think the key is twofold. One, we want to make sure that the DBAs are in control of their backups and their recoveries. Most importantly, the recoveries. Uh, this was one of our biggest problems. Um, we need consistent backup times, we need consistent recoveries. Using a tool like DD Boost, and going straight to data domain, whether that be through a traditional backup media like Networker, or using OEM to actually manage that backup puts the DBA in control without having to get the backup admin involved to try to get a restore done. But it also gives the backup admin the full control to manage the capacity. Excellent, all right Daryl, listen, thanks very much for coming back in theCUBE, appreciate you uh, sharing your perspectives and uh, have a good rest of the event. Thank you very much. Okay, this is Dave Vellante with John Furrier. We'll be right back uh, with Caitlin Fordham. We're going to talk about uh, the, the portfolio that, uh, that EMC has, how they're applying it to, to Oracle. We'll be right back after this.